Hey guys, it's Fantasy Simmer, and today I am doing a video on how I make my thumbnails. Finally, I know, right? <laughs> so many of you guys have been wanting this, and I've taken a long time to do it, and I'm sorry about that. And I also finally just made a how to install custom content video. If you guys haven't seen that, definitely go check that out, because I know a lot of you guys ask me that as well. So, the first thing you need to do if you want to create thumbnails like mine, I mean, you can use any program, but if you want to follow the steps that I'm doing, you need to download GIMP. And GIMP is free. Um, you can just go on Google, type GIMP, and it'll come up and you can download it. And after you've done that, open it up. And then what I do after I open it up is I click File. I click Open. And also, by the way, GIMP is on full screen. So yeah, you don't need to have a full screen. But a video is rendering right here. And that's going to be in the whole background because it won't go down for some reason. So I had to make it full screen. Also, this video might finish rendering while I'm recording this. So if it randomly pops up, that is why. <laughs> so yeah, anyways, um, for the sake of this tutorial, I put um, the background that I want to use. I just stuck it here on my desktop so I wouldn't be searching for a picture. So let's just open that up. And by the way, the, the size of this is um, 1280 by 720. Um, that's the size you need for a YouTube thumbnail. So if you are wanting to make a YouTube thumbnail from this tutorial, then make sure it is 1280 by 720. To size it, you could either go to picmonkey.com and resize the picture there. That's what I normally do. Or you can just click on image right here and scroll down to scale image and then you can just size it. See right there it says 1280 by 720. Type that in, click scale, and there you go. So the next thing I do after this is normally um, I want the picture even brighter than this. So I'll go to colors and I'll click on brightness contrast and this will come up and then basically I just like move it up and as you can see the picture gets a little brighter and then yeah I just move up the contrast I like my pictures really bright but it's totally like personal preference then after that I click on open file open <laughs> and then I grab the picture that I want for this thumbnail so for this tutorial I'm going to be using this and then I just hit open and it is going to open in a separate thing. So here it is here, and we're just, let me just drag it over here. And then from here, you're probably wondering how do I remove the background. So um, I to remove the background, what you do is you go over here to this little layers, little box right here, and you right click and it'll say add alpha channel. You have to click that, so let's do that. And then you go over here to the toolbox and there's this little fuzzy select tool, you click on this. And then basically you just click down and it'll kind of highlight it right here. And then on your keyboard you click delete and then there'll be a transparent background. So just do that all around your picture until all of the background is gone or whatever background you want gone. So there we go. Let me just get rid of that part. Alright, then after that, just move this down a little bit and then just to get rid of the fuzzy select tool, just right here, click this little thing with the arrows, it's just like the move tool. And then what you're going to do is grab this right here where it is in the layers and you're going to drag it over to your picture that you want for your thumbnail or whatever you are making. So there's how you do that. And I know her arm is like awkwardly cut off. Don't know what we're going to do about that right now, but it's because of the way I edited the picture in the first place because I used this picture for something on Tumblr. So yeah, <laughs> the random cut off, but you know, this is for the point of the tutorial. So it's all good. All right. So I want to move her over here and I'm just moving her by um, having this selected and it's the move tool and you can just move her around. And um, now let's say I want to make her bigger. So right here the little um, box with another little box with an arrow this is a scale tool and what you do is you click on it and then you drag it up however big you want to make her and then you just click OK or scale or whatever that said then you go back to the move tool and you can position her to how you want so yeah that's how you do that and I actually think I'm gonna make her even bigger to help with this awkwardness <laughs> so we're gonna do the same thing again we're going to pull it up and pull it out a little bit and then click scale and then again it's going to scale her up and I'm just going to see how it looks if I like okay there we go so now the her awkward arm thing is gone <laughs> alright so there's how she's sitting on the picture and I personally really like that so um, 
Also, this picture is already edited, so she looks very saturated and whatnot, but if you're using a picture that hasn't been edited yet that you just took in-game, basically just go to colors, brightness, like I showed you before, and then raise up the brightness and contrast, and it should like help brighten up the picture and make it look nice, but she already looks fine. So, the next thing I would normally do is, sometimes I do this, sometimes I don't, I would put the Sims 4 logo in. Lately, I haven't been doing that for every thumbnail, but for this video, I am going to add that. So... We are going to click on file, open, and then let's see, where is it? Here it is. So I just put this on my desktop. You can just find this on Google by typing <laughs> typing um, the Sims 4 logo and make sure it's transparent where it has the background that is like this. And then you just click open. Again, it's going to open it in a little separate box. Where is it? Here it is. All right. So let me just also click this off. You can click this off now once you are done with that. All right. So now we have this and I'm going to do the same thing as before where you go over here to this layer box and you just drag it over. We don't have to erase the background this time because there's no background. So we are going to click that off and then we're going to go back to here. And then, um, I like to normally just move it in front of her and then we're going to go to the skill tool again, I'm going to click that. And we're just going to scale this down to as small as we need it because it is huge. <laughs> so we're just going to scale that down. There we go. If the, if the like, you know, icon is big, it might take a little while to scale down. There might be a little loading thing. So we're just going to scale this down even more. There we go. And then, you know, I keep going back and forth from the move tool to the scale tool because after you scale it, you have to go to the move, the move tool to move it. So we're going to make it a little bit smaller. We'll make it like that. And then go back to the move tool and then we're going to move it probably about there. So that looks good to me. So now what I'm going to show you guys is how I add a little, well, maybe we'll do this after. Okay. Scratch that, what I just said. <laughs> um, the next thing we're actually going to do is we are going to move on to the font. So like, you know, whatever you want to write on the picture. So to do that, you go over here to the little A and it's the text tool. So you click on that and then it, you'll have the little thing here like that means like you can type, but you can't just type. You have to click down and then drag it out and there'll be, you know, a little text box will come. So for this is going to be the thumbnail that I use for this video, so I'm going to name it, okay, how I make my, and I'm not going to write all of it like that, we're going to just leave it like that, and I'm going to change the font in a second. The font's like that because that's the last font I used when I had GIMP open, so then we just size it up as you see. I, I didn't really explain that, but you guys saw what I did, so I... Let me make this box a little bigger. And if you want to make the box bigger, just pull out the way I'm doing right now. So <laughs> to scale up the font, you highlight it. You have to highlight it or it won't work. And then right here, there's a box and it has a number and it has an up and down arrow. arrow. Um, this one makes it smaller. And then the one on top makes it bigger. So we want to make it bigger. So we're going to do that. And now... I want to change the color so you highlight it again and there's this little box right here and normally it starts off black so you click on that and basically this whole thing of colors open up and you can put any color you want basically and I think I want to make it pink so I have a little thing right here of colors that I've recently used so I think I'm going to use this hot pink right here and then you just click OK and it'll change to that color so there you go and then if you you probably want to change the font Normally it won't start off with this font, it'll start off with like the Arial font. So to do that, you double click on the, the A, the text tool, and then the fonts will open. So then you click on text, and you'll just have all these fonts here. Now, if you don't have all the fonts that I have, that's because I download fonts off of dafont.com, D-A-F-O-N-T.com, and I download fonts onto there, I download fonts from there, <laughs> and yeah, then it just... You just install it and then it'll go into your GIMP or your Pic PicMonkey or your Photoshop, whatever you use. So yeah, we are just going to look for a font and I have no idea which font I'm going to use, so bear with me. So, hmm, no, we're going to do something a little more bold maybe. Let's see, there's this one, no. <laughs> so, okay, I have a million fonts guys, so 
bear with me. All right, so let's see. How does this one look? No. <laughs> I'm very picky. Maybe we'll do the, you know, the font that's so popular with everyone that I don't even remember what it's called, but it starts with a K. Oh, my video just finished rendering and it's probably going to pop up, so, yep, okay. All right, let's go back to what we were doing. Sorry about that. Okay, so, okay, let me just type in K. This is the font that, like, pretty much, like, so many people use it and it's just very popular. What is it called? Where is it? Oh, this one. KG, always a good time. So yeah. Yeah, I think we're going to use that one. So how I make my, so we're going to leave that like that. And then, so you're done with this part. You're happy with it. So what you do is I normally just click back on tutorial so that it'll unhighlight that. Um, every single layer you have will be right here. So this layer is the background. This one is, of course, what we just wrote. And then this layer is, her, is the sim. And then this layer is the Sims 4 logo. So now we have to finish what we were writing. So again, you click on the A tool and then again you drag out. And here's where I'm going to write thumb thumbnails. So how I make my thumbnails. Oops. All right. Thumbnails and again, we are going to highlight it and then we're going to size it up. So make it as big as you would like and then I don't know why I unhighlighted it, <laughs> but yeah, keep it highlighted and then change it to the color that you wanted. So again, we're going to make it pink and there we go. There's that one done, but I think I want a different font for the thumbnail. So you can totally do that. So I kind of want a different font for this word. So again, you just double click on the A like I showed you guys, and then we're just going to scroll for a font. Don't know what we're going to use, but we'll see. I'm trying to like scroll quickly for you guys so you guys aren't just like, oh my god. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I like that. Okay, so we're going to use this one and let's size it up even more. So again, just highlight it and then just hold this arrow, size it up as big as you want or as small as you want. And then we can click this little tool options off and then we're going to click back on tutorial. I just do that and then um, what I'm going to do is click on the thumbnails tab right here and then go over to the move tool and um, we're going to move this a little bit and we are also going to click on the how I make my thumbnails tab over here and then we're going to go over to the um, scale tool that I've showed you guys how to use. Click on that and then we're going to drag and make this bigger the same way that we made her bigger. So we're going to do that. I'm going to put this a little bit over top of her but it's gonna go under her so if you want to move a layer on top of another layer what you do is you click on it over here and there's arrows right here and you can raise this layer or lower this layer so we want to raise it so we're going to raise it up and then now it'll be above her and then if you want to do the same with the thumbnails just do the exact same thing and then that's above her as well so if we do drag it over there it won't go under her so that's how you do that and I think I'm just going to grab the move tool again and move this down a little bit and then move, uh, grab the scale tool and just drag it out a bit, make it a little bit bigger. So there we go. And then I'm going to go back to how I make my <laughs> and click on that and I'm very picky with this and I want it to be bigger. So we're going to do that. So we're going to just pull and drag again like we've been doing and there we go and then go back to the move tool. And then we're going to move it however we would like it. I think that's fine. And also, I'm starting to feel like the Sims 4 sign is a little bit too big because I want a little bit more room. So we're going to go back up to the Sims 4 logo. We're going to grab the scale tool and we're going to make it even smaller than we did before. So there's that. And we're just going to do that one more time to make it look a little bit better. All right, and now I'm trying to decide if I want it in the middle or if I want to move it over to the side. I think I'll like it on the side. Okay, we're going to move it to the side. So that's how you do that. Just move it around with the move tool. You can move it wherever you want. And then we're going to go back to the how I make my little tab. We're going to move it up now because now we have more space. And then we're going to go to the thumbnail tab or the thumbnails. We're going to move that up. Okay, 
And then I want to write how I make my thumbnails with GIMP. So we're going to add that in there and I think I'm going to do another font with that. So we're going to click on the A once again. Then we're going to click anywhere on this page and we're going to drag out. And then we're going to type in with GIMP or you know, whatever you're making. <laughs> and then we're going to highlight it, size it up just like we did before. I'm going to drag this down a little bit so there's a little bit more room. And then I'm going to highlight it again, click on the color option, and then we're going to make it pink again. So that's how you do that. And then again, we need to move the layer above um, the sim so that it's not behind her. So click on it, then click on this arrow, move it up. There we go. And I want to change the font to this. So again, um, double click on the A. This will open up. And then we're going to scroll down and, you know, whatever, look for the font that you would like. Hmm, what font do I want? <laughs> That's the hard part. Um, I don't know. I kind of know what font I want, but I don't remember what it's called. Is it this one? It's kind of like this one, but it's different. See how that one's like way too big. There's another one that's like that, but looks a lot better. So I'm just going to quickly try to find that. If I can't, we'll use something else. Let's see. I am so sorry about this <laughs> that I can't find it. I feel so bad. Um, I think it's around here. Here it is. The freshman one. It still looks so huge. Okay. I'm going to just drag this out until... Okay, there we go. And I'm going to size it down. So to size it down, highlight it and then click the down arrow. And then um, I want to make this box smaller now. So we are going to grab one of the corners of the box, any corner that you want. And we're just going to drag it until it's more the size of the font. And then we're going to drag this over here. And I think we're going to make, hmm, we're going to make this one pretty big. So I want to size it up again. So we're going to go to the scale tool and then scale it up like we were doing. There we go. So now it's a lot bigger. And okay, now we're going to go to the thumbnail tab. And now I want to make this bigger because it looks really weird. So small compared to everything else. So we're going to make that bigger like that. And I think I like how that looks. And the how I make my is pretty small, but that's because, you know, <laughs> like there's not that much space up here. But if we want to make it a little bit bigger, we can click on the sim click on the move tool and we can just move her like wherever we want. She can be more off to the side and there we go. <laughs> so I think I'm going to not move her that much, maybe like up to here. And then I'm going to click on the, how I make my little tab over here, go to the scale tool and then scale it out a little bit more. Then I want this to be just a little better. I don't know. I'm not liking how it looks. <laughs> so I'm going to click on with GIMP and I'm going to click on the move tool and I'm going to move it down to about there. And then again, I'm going to click on the thumbnails tab and move that down. And then the how I make my and then move that a little bit down. Um, I'll be completely honest, now I'm starting to feel like I don't like this font. And I'm very indecisive, you'll probably see throughout this video. So we are going to change the font of that. <laughs> Alright, so I guess you're getting the real deal of how I make my thumbnails because I'm so indecisive. Okay, so we're, we, I want to change the font to that. So I'm actually doing this wrong. First thing you actually have to do is click on the A, then click on here, then click, then this will come up and click edit. So it's going to go small again because we dragged it out to make it bigger, but no worries. We can just, you know, make it bigger again. So <laughs> now we want to change the font to something different because I'm not liking how it's going with this now. So I'm going to look for a different font. Um, what should we use? I feel like I want a more simple font. Maybe like this, possibly. We might use that one. Hmm. Let's see. I think we will end up using that one. What about this one? No, actually, we're going to use this one. Okay. I can never find this one, and I love it. I just love the way it looks. So we're going to use this. 
going to size it up a little bit because this font was smaller and scale that down. Okay, so now that we're done picking the font, we can click that off. Then we can click on the move tool and then we can move this accordingly wherever we want it. I'm going to move it up a little bit because I am going to scale it up. So now I'm going to click on the scale tool and then drag it out. So I'm liking how that looks a little bit more now. So now that, I've now that I'm liking how it looks, I feel like I just want this tiny bit higher, even though it's super high already. There we go. Okay. And I also think I want to click on thumbnails and then move it up a tiny bit, just like that. Maybe move it over a little bit. There we go. Okay. And actually, now I feel like we have more room and I feel like I'm going to move her back over a little bit. All right. So now we have that done. Now you guys might be thinking, well, how do you get the outlines around your fonts and all that? So to do that, I actually, I'm trying to think if I want to do this next, but yes, I do. <laughs> so to do that, I click, you know, I go to this layers little panel here and um, the first thing I want to do is put an outline in the how I make my. <laughs> okay, so we're going to right click on this part and then we're going to go to alpha to selection with the little red box right here. I'm going to click on that. It's going to make this little outline around everything. Then we are going to click on create new layer and it's this little paper thing. We're going to create new layer. Then we're, you can change the name if you want. I normally don't, so we're just going to leave it as layer. Then leave it on transparency and click OK. And then here's the layer. And then we want this layer to go underneath the how I make my thumbnail or how I make my. <laughs> so we're going to click on it. And then what I showed you before, we're going to click on lower this layer. So we're going to do that and it's going to lower it underneath it. So after we do that, then we're going to click on it. And then now we're going to work on making, you know, the outline to this font and I'm probably going to make a white outline. That's normally what I do. So what you do to do that is click select, then you click on grow. Then however much you want the outline, like how thick you want the outline to be, that's how much you're going to grow it by. So I normally grow it by five or seven. It really just depends. I think I'm going to grow it by seven for this one. So see how that moves up now. So now, you know, that's where your outline is going to go behind that. So then after you do that, you click on edit and then you click fill with BG color, which means background color. Don't click on fill with foreground color. It's going to just mess it up. It has to be background color because this is a background color. So if you want to change the background color, what you do first is see this little box right here with colors. You're going to click on the bottom one, which is the white one. It's going to open up the colors and then you can change it to whatever you want. You can make it, if you want a pink outline, a purple outline, anything, you just click on it and then click OK. And then um, it, when you click edit here, it'll be purple or whatever color instead of white. But for the purpose of this, we are going to leave it white because that's how I like it. So we're going to click with fill with foreground, co background color, not foreground. <laughs> Don't click foreground. Okay. Fill with background color. Okay. And now it's going to fill it like that. Now, if you want it to like stand out a little bit more, so it just looks more, I don't know. It just makes the thumbnail look better and more put together. So basically we're going to add a shadow behind the font so that it just stands out more. It just looks better. So to do that, you click on filters, then you go down to light and shadow. Then you click on drop shadow. And this little box is going to come up and normally I just leave it on four and you pretty much, yeah, you don't really need to change any of this. It, four is completely fine. So then you just click OK and it's going to load. And then now you have a little drop shadow behind this. And if you guys can't see it, let me just, okay, well, let me tell you this first. After you do this, <laughs> click on select and cl um, click none so that you can, you're done with this part. You don't need it like highlighted anymore. So click none. And then now, as you can see, you can see the shadow in the back, so it just stands out more. So now we're going to do the same exact thing with both of these. So then you go to thumbnails, alpha to selection, then you click on a new layer. Then again, just click OK. Now it'll say layer number one because we already have a layer. So every time you add a new layer, it'll be number one, number two, number three. Just so you can keep track of each layer. So then you move this layer below by clicking this arrow. Then you click on layer number one. Then you go to grow and then whatever you want to grow it by, I'm going to leave it at seven and then you click. Okay. It's going to outline it again. 
Then you go to edit and then fill with background color once again. And then after you do that, you click on filter once again, click on light and shadow, drop shadow. This will pop up, click OK. And then that'll the shadow will be go behind it and then you click on select and click none. And there you go. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to show you it again. Just so you know, it's, I feel like tutorials are better if it shows you things over and over again. It kind of sticks in your head and yeah. So with the last one, same thing again, alpha to selection, um, click on a new layer, click OK. Now this is layer number two. Um, put it down below, click on it, go to select, click on grow. I'm going to leave it at seven, but you can change it to whatever you'd like. And then you click OK. Then you go to edit fill with background color, filters, light and shadow, drop shadow, then you click OK. And then a little shadow is going to go behind it. Now something just happened and I'm glad it happened because now I can show you guys if this happens. So um, I'll, I'll tell you guys what just happened in a second if you guys aren't realizing. So then again select none. So as you guys might be noticing there's right here if you look closely a little bit of transparency is showing and the thumbnail, um, the background kind of lifted up when we put a drop shadow here. The reason that happened is because we added a drop shadow very close to the edge of the picture. So what you need to fix that is you click on your background, which is called tutorial for me, and it's the blue thing back here. Click on that, and then you click on the scale little button thing that I've been showing you guys, and then basically just drag it out to where it was. So there we go. Now it's filled in again. So yeah, that's how you do that if that happens and you're like, ah, what happened? <laughs> okay, so now that we've done that, I'm going to show you guys how I add a white, um, a white outline around my Sims. So to do that, it's kind of the same um, process as doing it for the fonts, but I'm going to show you it for a Sim. So what you do is click on the picture that is your Sim over here. Then you right click alpha to selection, just like we've been doing, add a new layer, the same as for the fonts. And then you move the layer down below, just like we've been doing as well for the fonts. And then we click on this on the layer and then we click select grow. And then I don't really like to grow it up by seven. I normally will grow it up by five. So grow it up by five, see the outline around it and then edit, fill with background color. And there we go. And I don't really like to add a drop shadow behind my Sims, but you know, if you want to just do the exact same thing that we did for the font background uh, shadow. And yeah, then you just click select again and click none and it'll unselect it. And that's how you do an outline around the sim. And then now I'm going to just show you, oh, hold on. I see another little transparency thing here. So let's click on the background again and let's pull this out a tiny bit. There we go. Just ever so slightly. All right. So next thing I'm going to show you guys is how I add like emojis to my thumbnails. I've been doing that a lot lately and I really like it. <laughs> All right. So then I'll go to file open. Oops. Wait, what did I just click? I don't know. Open. And then right here, I have three emojis that I wanted to use for this. I don't know if I'm going to use all of them. Um, I think we're going to use the heart. So let's open that. And you guys have probably been noticing that these have been in my thumbnails lately. <clears throat> um, all I did was, all I did to get them is searched iPhone emojis on Google. And yeah, I just downloaded them and so what we're gonna do here is the same thing we did to add the sim to the picture so this is already a transparent background so we don't have to worry about that all we do is go over here to the layers and then click and drag it over and then we're going to move it up and I'm just going to move this um, I want to move it all the way to the top so we're gonna click on it and then just move it all the way up keep clicking until it's all the way to the top so there we go and then now we want to scale it down of course because it's huge so <laughs> we're gonna click on the scale tool and we're just going to scale it down the same way, do it for everything else. Scale it down to pretty small, then we're going to click scale. Then we're going to grab the move tool, and then we're going to move it down. All right, so I kind of want another emoji. So <laughs> we're going to click open, or file, <laughs> open. And then I think I'm going to do the thumbs up. So we're going to open that up. And here it is. And then again, same thing. We just click over here. It's already transparent background. Click and drag over to this picture and it's already on the top now. So that's perfect. And then um, we want to scale it down. So click the scale tool and then we're going to scale this to as small as we want it and then click scale and then grab the move tool and then move it up here. 
So yeah, there we go. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, I think. There we go. And then I'm going to move it a little bit. And then I just want to click on the background quickly so nothing will be highlighted. All right, so yeah, that's pretty much how I make my thumbnails. Um, if you guys want to add a plumb bob or something, basically you just go to Google and you type Sims 4 plumb bob or whatever plumb bob you want, Sims 3 plumb bob, anything, and then download one that has a transparent background. And then you just do the same thing that I've been doing for these emojis. You just click File, Open, and then um, open up the um, plumb bob, and then you would just drag it over and resize it. So exact same thing. And yeah, there's nothing really else I can show you guys. I mean, that's pretty much how I do my thumbnails. But one more thing I want to just quickly do, I want the background a little bit lighter. So we're going to scale up the brightness a little bit. And then we're going to click OK. And now the background's a little bit lighter. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was helpful for you guys. I showed you guys pretty much every single thing I do. If you guys want to add more sims to the picture, you do the exact same thing as you did to as I did to add her. You would just click open again and then you know, click on the other sim you want to add and then just drag it over the picture and then arrange them accordingly, however you want them to be added. And yeah, that's pretty much all I ever do. I don't do anything, you know, else look really fancy. Um, whenever I have like, I don't know if you guys notice, sometimes I have like sparkles on my picture. Um, that is another just thing I got from Google. I just typed in, I actually typed in stars. I typed in transparent stars and I found one that I like that looks like little sparkles and sometimes I'll put it around my font and stuff like that so it's like sparkling and basically it's just a transparent background. I just drag it onto the picture the same I do with these emojis and then I just arrange them how I want them and yeah that's pretty much it. So yeah I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful and I hope it wasn't too long and boring for you guys. I wanted to show you guys how I do everything and yeah. <laughs> um, if you guys have any further questions, if I, you know, there's something you don't know how to do, I didn't show or something, totally comment down below asking me. But this is everything I do for my thumbna thumbnails. So I hope you guys help this. <laughs> I hope I hope this helped you guys out. For anyone who ha is having trouble with GIMP or doesn't know what to use for their editing program, you can totally use GIMP. It's totally free. And yeah, I remember when I started using GIMP, I was like, what the heck is this? I did not understand it. I was like, oh my goodness. I watched like a bunch of tutorials and finally I have figured out how to use it and it's just completely natural to me. Honestly, if it's hard for you at first, it will come easy to you with time. Just, you know, as you do it over and over again, it'll become very easy and just natural to you. So yeah, again, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.